sanctuary, going to seize the crown and and anoint himself queen of Vortex. Oh, we're going to find out. The first legacy will be told here as we, like you said, it is the princess bout. We got Ling versus the actuary uh, with, I don't think this one happened earlier today. Uh, if I remember correctly, but uh, actually, of course, on the loser side, actually going on an incredible run to get all the way to this point. Yeah, no, it, and especially a character with a character like Zelda too, right? A character that's so hard to be consistent with because he's, it's completely based on your reads and conditioning of your opponent, and you have to think so hard. You don't really get an autopilot with a character like Which that. Which is exactly why it's hard sometimes to deal with someone like Peach in this situation because Peach doesn't let you autopilot, especially Ling. Ling is a, the, an anti-autopilot machine uh, against uh, players like this. So you're going to have to be very careful about how often you try to set up things like Phantom because Ling will sneak his way through right with Peach Bomb and blow you up for it. And actually they're just trying to find a teleport mix up. The Ling just said, okay, sure, like whatever, I'll just hold the shield and punish you with an F smash. Ash. So, so far, Actuary, all of the tricks that have gotten Actuary to this point so far, Ling literally is just saying, no. Just, no. Sorry, go next. Yeah, and just keep it up that way. Uh, only 30% applied. Of course, uh, the Actuary always tries to get people to trip up, go try to punish that last one, but Angel Platform Invincibility is still on, so you just need to give him that respect because he will get you on a free punish, and Ling already racking up 59% on the second stock. And Actuary is also a, is a player who kind of comes into each event with a play style. He'll, he'll mix up his, his, his tricks and his playstyle between events, but doesn't so much. He'll, he'll start to show more as the bracket goes on, but he, he doesn't, like, Ling, eventually he runs out, and Ling having pin winner side and watching all of these. This is where you start to see that, that matchup differential of a character that can control the pace of the game versus a character who's really good at playing around grounded control-based gameplay like Peach. But it's not even just been that. Ling's ledge trap game has been absurd, and so far actually has not had an answer as he dips all the way down there to try and find that downer. And and the fact that Ling just there was willing to drift back at kind of dare actually to come off, contest to that umbrella, contest that power result to find his way out, and the float as well. Link's sp micro-spacing this matchup has just been so good, dancing and tantalizing actuary to find a way a in, saying, come hit me, but actually it's just an empty commitment. That's There's nothing here to begin <laughs> 90%, with. 90%, it's, it's the most frustrating thing about fighting Ling is uh, when he makes it look like it's a punishable, uh, punishable situation, and it's not. Of course, uh, Peach having those quick aerials off of short hop, and there's that Peach bomb we saw before. Four. That four in a row, four in a row. Make them hips work, girl. Just keeping it going, and uh, actually he just hasn't had an answer. Yeah, no, absolutely. It definitely feels like this is it's not a princess battle, but it's the bull versus the matador, or actually feeling like he has to charge for it charge forward and Ling just going away and stepping out of the way every single time. Which is normally the opposite way. Normally it's Zelda that plays the Matador role and you just can't do that against someone like uh, Ling, especially right now with his built up lead, trying to uh, just get Actuary to approach. Actuary has to try and somehow get him with more Nairs and use f in and add dash attack more, but Ling is not letting him get that. No, not at all. And now on his last back, a 150% hit in game one. Down smash isn't going to do it yet. He sends the wrong way to boot. But Akira really cannot take too many more hits. And even though percent normally doesn't matter for Zelda, that's a big lead. Wow, I'm very surprised that Forwarder didn't kill. That was 181% after the hit. However, the fourth throw from Toad. Fourth throw from Toad said, this is the right princess, this is my queen, as he gets the knockout off the side. Definitely didn't expect that to be the kill, but uh, that's going to give Ling the first point on the board. See, Peach is stronger because her protection isn't its own Smash character, let alone three of them. So she got an army like hidden in her pocket yeah. somewhere. The Toad just keeps yeah, coming he, out. He actually shrinks down. He's actually his, his, his model is stored in her in her glove, now, is and she, it shrinks down. Is she a peaceful one, and she has the same Toad repeatedly, or is she a tyrant and constantly just tosses them aside and uses a new one each time. Who knows? Uh, 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 Chris Pratt can tell you. <laughs> Anyways. He's going to tell us a lot. <laughs> He's going to tell us a lot. Mushroom of Kingdom. See, ain't my Mario the impression fantastic? Man, but you, you should play. Oh, man, should play I should voice Mario. Problem solved. Anyways, <laughs> getting into it, that wind box creating a little bit of a weird interaction. Neither player trying to find too, able to find too much of an advantage state, but actually a little bit of a panic roll, and Ling just ready for it. Now with the dot eyes <laughs> just racking up this damage, there's been 92 on a corner situation from what should have been an even game, just because actuary might have either buffered or panicked and threw a roll in. Yeah, and even after trying to somehow stop that turn up down, uh, Ling already positioned on it. That's that aerial approach game that we talked about with Peach before, and that right there, normally most characters would see that Phantom after they burn that jump and go, oh crap. 
I have to guess now, Peach doesn't. And that has uh, been a big problem so far for Actuary to try and somehow make Ling fear the Phantom, and it just hasn't been a problem. Yeah, the ability for Ling to find just over and over, or really not doing much, right? He's just sitting in the same space. He has not moved from underneath that platform since he took the first stock until right now. He just held that quarter of the stage and just said, okay, come, you, you're not able to get in. I'm not letting you, and I'm going to hit you once. You're back at ledge. Let's do this again. And yep. Actuary just hasn't been able to get off the ledge. Again. Something I just thought about, too, that might be playing against Actuary here is that because you lose, you lost the stage counter pick war, uh, Ling, for one, is probably never going to give you FD. But the idea of going to Kalos is enticing until you remember what happened to Kiwi earlier, yep. where Ling will camp you out on those top platforms. That's the only, like, super flat stage. So your one other play you have, essentially, is Town but that opens up even earlier at lead traps that you've been getting punished on a ton. I would not be surprised to see, though, if it goes to game, uh, when it comes to game three, if actually does decide to pull the trigger on Town as a counter pick. Yeah, I was gonna say, I wouldn't be surprised with Town. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I also, like, weirdly wouldn't be that surprised with Smashville because reducing the amount of stage he has to work with and really forcing him okay. to like, if you force Peach to scrap with Zelda, her hits are just gonna hit harder. Also, I'm sorry, Ling is the most aggressive player from the Angel platform in like the whole game. That's so it. the fact that he just got hit, oh come on, uh, not oh again. come on, not oh, again. come on. RNGs is coming through here oh at the last second too. I'm putting on 102 and immediately smacking him out of the game. Ling having all the blessings of everything you need, the entities above helping him to try and just end this tournament run here with Legacy with a potential 3-0. Just one game away, Ling really saying, you know what guys, I, I want my money. It's, a, it's late. It's 8 o'clock. Hand it over. Let's let's get out of here before KK Slider shows up. Is it, we've only got five minutes. So uh, we'll see where we're heading, heading next because there's a whole bunch of stages that c you could go to depending on what you feel is the issue in this matchup. But actually, I'm just going to opt to go back to Small Battlefield. But without Dominant Ling was uh, playing around the platforms, it, it's a little bit interesting, even mm -hmm. though on paper he might like it. Yeah, I, I think it probably has something to do with whatever has been banned prior. Uh, so right now, uh, at least with maybe some platform mix up to try and get stuff like that right there, uh, see if he can get something started. He has had a couple of moments of brilliance and such, and that was some of the most helpful D I've ever seen <laughs> get sent to the right that far. I thought Ling was going to die to that. I, I did as well, and but Ling, knowing that if he just holds that float, they actually literally cannot hit him without going off, was really good stuff. And Ling, again, with these really just beautiful routes, he's so patient at recovering and really willing to use all of the time that he can. But eventually, time runs out, and that's when you get caught by that up yep. B. There's the fake spot dodge and the up B in his place, essentially. He's so good at catching that, but Ling catching him as he tries to go back onto the ledge. Can he get him on his way up? Good defense that time from the fair. Still catching him with the near though, and so far, the biggest thing with uh, Zelda is that every button she presses in the air is a commitment. There's no follow-up. It's you. That is your one, and where I'm going to punish you later. Ling has been really good at making sure he never falls for those one hits. And the actual waiting, daring Ling to do it, to push an option from that mistech Ling finally with that delayed hole and actually calling out the lightning kick. Now in this continued edge trap, this is where actually this game specifically has started to make stuff happen, but Ling using that win box, getting pushed behind and really fought using the fandom to get out of the situation mm. at least for a moment. It actually seems like staying still is the name of the game for actually. Two Fiora's wins in place actually hit, and then this last one here was a forward smash in place, and he's actually building up a lead and down smash comes through uh, and actually is actually not done yes yet. Uh, hold on, this might... Actually, ha it hasn't lost the stock yet. And I, I think it's really, you know, at the end of the day, we're like, you know what? You know what Zelda's key to success is in this match? Push less button. Just put your controller yep. down. If Go you, outside, If you grass. stay still, Ling will come. <laughs> Just eventually, he will show up to you, and you will get the punish. If, if we build it, uh, they will come, uh, like... Didn't expect that as this matchup, because Ling has just basically been playing around that this whole time, but the actuary just doesn't care. And no, it's just incredibly impressive. So they're now actually starting to, now that he kind of can control the pace of the game a little bit, he's starting to use those fandom, take the turnip game just entirely away from Ling. And this is what we're, I, we're, I was talking about earlier with the potential the possibility of, of Smashville. And that if Ling just has to scrap versus Actuary, Zelda just hits harder than Peach does. Yeah, at the moment, it's actually kind of crazy. Like, outside of forward air and Peach Bomber, uh, the actual raw damage potential, and that 
Phantom actually kept him stuck a little bit longer in there to get that free punish. So the uh, actuary looking like he might get a two stock here as it happens. And actuary was a little bit done with that pressure and that free dominant behavior that Ling had that last two games and actually puts himself on the board. Yeah, and you can see Ling on it on Ling's face. You don't see it that much. The way he just looked down there for a second, he is going deep in thought, trying to figure out what went wrong that game. He was so dominant through the beginning of the set. And now to lose game three like that is a test of anyone's mental. But thankfully you're Ling and you have one of the best mentals. In the yeah. World. And luckily, uh, not only do you have a whole set to play with, but also you're up two games already. Yep. So, okay, you got that one. Can you replicate it? And Ling now taking away that smaller stage, going to the wider stage here once again with PS2. So what, like we said, normally is the full stage control based gameplay that actually would go for. It's been working against them. All right, all right, dude. Okay, this so is ridiculous. We're, we're up to, I think, three or four stitches uh, on the night, two Mr. Saturns. Five, we saw a bomb five bomb. Five, five, stitches. five stitches, yep, five stitches, two Mr. Saturns, at least four or five dot eyes, and a bomb bomb. So like, second stitch of the set. Pot bonus happened, and, and Ling immediately was just like, all right, all right, RNG's help. Help me. And right now it's working pretty well as 112 is sitting on the side of Ling and trying to keep building up. Winky Face won't find that neutral getup. Doesn't matter though, Dash Attack does. Yeah, one of the really interesting things I think about this stage in this matchup that's been really helpful we saw at the start is that the increased height on these platforms means that Ling can not only block off platforms, but throw, turn it forward over Phantom. And so you can't use Displaced Phantom to hide from Turnip on the stage. And that's really been the key for Actuary to dealing with all of these items and projectiles so far in this event. Yep. And Actually, uh, after that last game, I don't feel too uncomfortable with the idea that he can make this comeback here. One thing I do think is a big difference, though. Last stage, he had a smaller room. To, uh, it was less room to work with. Actually, he stood still and he won. PS2, that's not a problem for Ling. If you want to stay still, that's fine, because he has so much more room to hide from you. He can just pull turnips once again. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, right now, just pulling turnips. But actually, that time, he led it, he's charging the Phantom so short of full, using it to cover platform. And again, Ling that time saying, okay, it's not going to go to platform. I'm safe after calling out the lightning kick, making it happen, keeping himself in this. Actually trying to keep the, exactly keep that uh, run alive, which has been a tremendous run all the way up to this point. But can he find that success against Ling one more time like he did the last one? So far, it's not looking like it as he's sitting at 127. Does Ling guess with the backer at the ledge? No, instead tries to go for an empty jump grab, but actually already moved his way out of there. Nehru's level going punish, not the easiest thing to punish on landing. Yeah, and, and the, just in that position with how small Ling shield, small Ling shield was, dude, it's really scary because uh, you're just at risk. Like, if, if, if you don't punish it right, then you're at risk of a shield break, you're at risk of just so many things going wrong, but now Peach Dash Attack actually coming in, Link slowly clawing that stage control, but actually working his way back, these two players just kind of going Starting back and forth, to... ebb and flow, trying to put one off stage and Link to find the situation, but a rare overextension. Yeah, Link starting to pull away that hope and dream of actually trying to keep himself around. Of course, he got all the way up to second at this point, but he wants more. Definitely one of his best performances he's had so far throughout the, the like the season, which is coming to a close pretty soon. Good nail on the head of it, but not trying to be out just yet. Going for another Fiora's win, but this time Ling actually punishing it. And if he gets the right read at ledge, trying to go for a full charge up smash to close it out. I, res I respect it. If, you know, I, I respect it. You're up a full stock, so like, you know, you, 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 just, you just take those risks, especially when it's, like, if you're actually, you have to kind of make a read to even, even up the stock count. Um, and Ling just... In that up smash, dude, you're starting to scare Actuary, right? You're starting yep. to work on that mental. You're starting to make him less wanting to approach. Mm -hmm. Because once the stock counts even, that's where you're concerned. And at 123, basically every mistake from this point forward is going to cost you. And that's 112 sitting on Ling. He can absolutely uh, he can absolutely get this one and maybe find an early stock. But every single thing he puts up as a defensive wall is, has the likelihood of finding a Peach Bomber sneak his way through. Not going to find the grab. And down smash does get it. And we have a last stop. And Peach sometimes can struggle to kill, especially on larger stages. And that's the one downside of being on PS2. Is actually is going to live longer. Does not need nearly as many hits to make this happen. Ajax, it's the corner situation. Yeah, right now 36%, but it's not that bad. But finally finds a mistake in that forward air. Was bringing it all the way back. Well done. But Ling will be the inaugural champion of our very first brand new series of Legacy here at Vortex, uh, our brand new monthly series that has begun and will continue maybe here, maybe at bigger events, who knows, but I am glad that we finally got to have one. Very excited to see that this series will continue. And Ling, of course, coming out here, wanting to get that first dub, 
He's going to take it out. Light couldn't make it here today, so that was basically a target of like, ooh, the pot bonus, that money is mine. But well done to Actuary as well to make it all the way to this point, get second, and an incredible run to get up to here. Yeah, no, it has been an incredible event. And while, unfortunately, we did have some DQs of some pretty notable players, Palka, Luxa, 6AM, all unfortunately, Scott, all unfortunately unable to make it due to health issues or just other conflicts, um, what happened as a result is we got to showcase some of the lesser known half of CT's incredibly deep talent. Speaking of, I'm going to bring it up one more time. We got to talk about it as we get ready to close things out. Glitch Duel of Fates does happen to include a Zelda based character, Capodium, along with those Fire Emblem characters. The Actuary is sitting right there on the Capodium. So if you could go ahead and throw some love uh, there, his way and try and get uh, help him to get that much further out, greatly appreciate it. The fist bump did actually happen. I saw it in the camera. It was just before they act I switched it. Uh, but uh, here in. Uh, the ads. I got thrown off by seeing somebody say that. They did fist bump. We still have Double Down. Check out Double Down, Las Vegas' newest super major. Er, in the convention center, in Las Vegas, 17th and 19th. In, that venue is huge, and it's so huge. Not only is ult there, not only is melee there, but there's a billion different fighting games. They're teaming up with Level Up Expo. They've got multiverses too. It's just, it's gonna, it's gonna be insane. Yeah, it's gonna be a phenomenal time. We're gonna go ahead and actually get ready to wrap this one up here. Which we're gonna go ahead and give some love and support to VG Bootcamp who let us use the mainstream here in the first place. Very much appreciate that. Thank you so much, of course, for everybody in the team who has been supporting me for a long time. We're gonna uh, also, you'll be seeing us send us that way over there. Relive history, make history by watching VG TV Melee and VG TV Ultimate. They have it going 24 hours on Twitch. You can always catch everything, and you can catch us every single week. That's not completely up to date. It's Tuesday and Wednesdays now. It is Super, Ma uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate on the week during Tuesdays, and then on Wednesdays, it's our Multiverses uh, Weeklies. We also plan to have an FGC night with other things around the corner. Speaking of, Xanadu also does that. Xanadu Games, MDVA's Premier Smash Weekly happens every Tuesday as well, so if you can't make it up here, you can make it down there. Show them some love too. But that's going to be it for us here tonight. Get ready to get rated out. Uh, everybody, uh, thank you so much for all the support you gave. And, and good job being, I mean, you're on this pretty much almost all day. I mean, listen, from this summer, I'm a little used to it. I've gotten some you had amazing college in the way, so. I've got some amazing opportunities to just cast for long stretches. So my stamina is up there. But uh, you guys should check out Aj um, Ajax underscore HQ on Twitter uh, just for some amazing, just Smash takes, FGC takes, multiverses content. This man is the premier source for multiverses anywhere. Yeah, I love all the games. I love doing all these things, but of course, that's a wrap for us tonight. You can follow us on our socials right below. I'm Thank Mitchell you so much. And Ajax underscore HQ, of course. Thank you for joining us here for our very first monthly. We'll see you more, and I will see all of y'all in some upcoming events as well, of course. Uh, be sure to say hi if you do. And for now, y'all have a great rest of your night.